This time we're going to look at inequalities of a different type. We call them polynomial inequalities because this is an inequality with an order greater than 2, larger than a quadratic inequality. And just to make it easy, I already factored the left side. So let's say that uh, if we were to multiply this out, we get an x cubed as part of the, one of the terms, but we don't want to get ourselves involved in trying to factor a polynomial in this case. We just want to show you how to solve an inequality of this type. And uh, so then the next stage at this point, since you already have this in a factored form, we're now going to write the equivalent equation. So this would then be x minus 1 times x plus 2 times x minus 3 is equal to 0. And of course we do that because the solution we get out of solving for this are the critical points that delineate all the various regions that will offer us a solution to that inequality. If we multiply three binomials together and we get a zero, that can only happen if any one of those three is zero. With other words, x minus 1 is equal to zero, or x plus 2 is equal to zero, or x minus 3 must equal zero. In this case, x is equal to 1, or in this case, x is equal to minus 2, or in this case, x is equal to 3. So we have three values for x, that delineate the regions that we're going to have to test out to see if they satisfy that particular inequality. So we're going to write those numbers on the number line. Here's 0, 1, 2, 3. Oop, that's not a very good looking 3. Let me redo that. 3, and here we have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So x equal 1 is one of our solutions, and since we have an equal sign there as well, so it's less than or equal to, that means that the critical points or the endpoints of the regions are included in the solution. So we draw a solid circle for number one, we draw a solid circle for x equal negative two, and we draw a solid circle for x equals three. So those are the critical points that delineate four regions. We have region one to the left of negative two, we have region two between negative two and one, we have region three between 1 and 3, and we have region 4 to the right of the number 3. So you can tell that really the only difference between a polynomial inequality or a, and a quadratic inequality is that you have more regions. If this was a polynomial to the fourth power, a polynomial to the fifth power, you just would have more and more regions to deal with. To figure out which of these four regions satisfies that particular inequality, we're going to have to put in test points. So let's start with region 1, and we're going to let x equals negative 3. It's a good test point. Might as well make it as small as you possibly can. We could pick x equals minus 375, but that would make it kind of difficult to solve for the, for the um, what, to see whether or not it solves inequality. So let's just pick small numbers like x equals negative 3, and let's plug them into our inequality. So that means we have negative 3 minus 1, times negative 3 plus 2 times negative 3 minus 3 less than or equal to 0. Now here we're going to do something slightly different. I realize that negative 3 minus 1 is a negative number. I realize that negative 3 plus 2 is also a negative number and that negative 3 minus 3 is also a negative number. So that means I have a negative number multiplied times a negative number, multiplied times a negative number. And if I multiply a negative times a negative times a negative, I get a negative number. And a negative number is indeed less than zero. So that means yes. The point negative three is in a region that satisfies inequality. So I can go ahead and indicate that by drawing this solid line over here with a little arrow, which means all the points on the number line to the left of negative 2, including the number negative 2, satisfy that particular inequality. All right, now we have to test for the next um, interval right here, interval number 2, or region number 2. And so for that, we're going to plug in a point in this interval. So let's pick the point 0. It's always the best point to pick. So let x equal 0. When we do that, we plug that in here we get x minus, oh, not x, but 0 minus 1, because I replaced the x by 0, times 0 plus 2, 
times 0 minus 3. And the question is, is that less than or equal to 0? That's the question. So again, instead of working it all out, what we can do instead is realize that this is a negative number, this is a positive number, and this is a negative number. So when I multiply a negative number times a positive number times a negative number, I get a positive number because when you multiply an even number of negative numbers, you get a positive number. And a positive number is not less than or equal to zero, so therefore that does not satisfy the inequality. So any points in this region are not part of the solution. Testing region number three. I plug in a test point, so let's pick the number 2. Let x equals 2 and plug that into our inequality. So we get 2 minus 1, multiply times 2 plus 2, multiply times 2 minus 3. And the question is, is that less than or equal to 0? And again, without working it out, I realize that this here is a positive number. This here is a positive number, and this here is a negative number. And if I multiply a positive number times a positive number times a negative number, I get a negative number. And a negative number is indeed less than zero, so the answer is yes. That satisfies inequality, and that means that the region between 1 and 3 is included in the solution. And then finally, for the final region, region number 4, Again, I'm going to plug in a test point. So in this case, let's plug in the point number 4, which is to the right of 3, in region number 4. Let x equals 4. And when we plug that in, in our inequality, we get 4 minus 1 times 4 plus 2 times 4 minus 3. And the question is, is that less than or equal to 0? And again, without working it, actually working it out, 4 minus 1 is a positive number, 4 plus 2 is a positive number, and 4 minus 3 is a positive number. So if I multiply a positive number times a positive number times a positive number, I get a positive number, and a positive number cannot be less than or equal to 0, so the answer is no. That means that this region is not part of the solution. So the only numbers that can be part of the solution to the inequality are the numbers to the left of negative 2, and all the numbers, oh, and including, of course, negative 2, and all the numbers between 1 and 3, including the numbers 1 and 3. And that's how you solve a polynomial inequality.